Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from uh, Witherby Publishing. It's a book we've reviewed before and it's called Insuring Cargoes, a practical guide to the law and practice, now in a second edition, and it's been written by K.S. Uh, Wishvanath. Now the book I think is quite important because it deals with an area of the law that I studied for my bar examination some 30 odd years ago, which was then called International Trade. And I did actually a module concerning shipping law, and it was actually about cargoes specifically. Now, we didn't have books like this available at that time, but this is a particularly good book. Elizabeth wrote the <coughs> original review, and I've just tidied it up a bit. Um, we've given it a title, The Almost Infinite Complexities of Insuring Cargoes, Brilliantly Explained in Detail. And that's what you get here. Now, it's a heavy book. You can see this. There's the front. It's a paperback. There's the side. There's nothing on the back, basically, apart from just a little bit of blurb. But opening it up, um, you get some idea of, of what you've got. Right at the back, you've actually got, it's called Books, but it means a bibliography, and it refers to other books within the, uh, this particular area. And of course the leading publishers are, there's also a bibliography to go with the books itself, but it's split up into journals as well as books. The leading um, publishers are Routledge, of course, part of um, Taylor and Francis. Then you've got uh, some various points at the back, something called dry bulk cargoes, and it gives a description, which gives you some idea of what that means. Then you've got a bas basically a number of of um, <clears throat> appendices effectively at the back, although well, they're not actually called that. Uh, the book runs to some 500 pages. The front of the book is there. It's a heavy book, I hasten to add. Witherby's have been with us since 1740. You can probably see the um, little crest there. <clears throat> then you've got a very nice dedication by the author. We only ever review books that we like. So I'm not going to review a book I don't like because there's no point. Uh, it seems pointless. It tells you about the author, Mr. Uh, Vishwanath. And then there's a forward to the first edition, which appeared some years ago now. Um, and then forward to the second edition, which has been written by Mike uh, Roderick. Then you get to the preface to go with the second edition, which sets out effectively or what the book's about. And there's a nice email from the author in case you want to make any comments. Um, he says, of course, it's been little more than a decade since the first edition was published. I've been overwhelmed by the positive responses, constructive feedback received from practitioners. Such responses are the main driving force in bringing out the second edition. Very pleased about that. Very useful abbreviations. Can I just say these abbreviations are really quite important because uh, to someone who's new to this area of law practice, um, it's quite useful to know what some of them stand for. The standard ones are there, like, for instance, CIF, Cost Insurance and Freight, and FOB, Free On Board. Those are big, big sort of abbreviations which you've got to really know about. Then you get the contents there, and it runs all the way through. It's split into various different chapter headings. And you should have everything, if you're involved in this area of law, you should have everything that you, you actually need to, to look for in the index, which is quite detailed. You can probably see that. It's obviously got the page numbering. There is, of course, paragraph numbering. Then at the back, as I've said, you've got the appendices and then the bibliography. Not actually marked as such. It was a bit confusing when I first looked at it. The case law list is quite important. There's quite a lot of case case law. And some of the cases are quite big. Uh, I actually had to look at one for, specifically for the bar exams and it was a very substantial case. The exam itself was a, about a four hour exam because we were given an extra half an hour to read the case. Introduction to International Trade and Cargo Insurance. So you, you basically have a standard structure and it sets out for anybody interested in this area of law. It's uh, very, very helpful. Um, we didn't have this when I did these exams years ago, but I do think it's important. You can see the paragraph numbering. And then running through, you do actually have footnoting at the bottom all the way through. And just running through, you can see. So it's a heavy book, 
because the paper is, is really very nice. But you can see again, there's a lot of detail, very substantial detail. So what do we say about the book? Well, this. <clears throat> Ships' cargoes, they make the world go round and um, as they are shipped around the world and inevitably and indeed compulsorily they are and they must be insured. So the potential legalities and complexities are of course almost infinite, hence the pressing need for this detailed and authoritative text now available in the second edition after a decade. Certainly shipping lawyers, not to mention specialists in shipping insurance, will find it a useful reference and it comes under the general concept of international trade. So within more than 550 glossy pages, this volume contains something of a goldmine of information and advice, often presented um, diagrammatically, which covers virtually every aspect and contingency in which a practitioner is likely to be involved. <coughs> Quote, a practical guide to the law and practice is the subhead of insuring cargoes. It certainly is. And the fact that it is now being published in a second edition attests to its value. The publishers are Witherby Publishing Group, and they're an old firm, who make our li legal lives, I think, so much easier with excellent publications like Insuring Cargoes. Now, the author is K.S. Vishwanath, and he points out that it's been more than a decade since the publication of the first edition, during which time, of course, a number of important and significant developments have rendered the publication of a second edition not only necessary, uh, but crucial. And the case of, of Sendor MOPU, for example, is um, cited in the book as a key development and is rightly described by authoritative sources as, quote, arguably the most important decision in the law of maritime insurance since the Second World War. And I think that's important because case law does play um, a prime function in this particular area. There's another quote from the author. I have virtually rewritten this book, he says, referring to the other important developments, such as the Insurance Act, which came in 2015, to cite only one example. New chapters on new developments which have taken place have been added on such issues as war and strikes, rejection risks and recoveries. And of course, there's much more covering particular areas. And I think you'll find the information very helpful from the contents section. And of course, one look at the 11 page table of contents indicates the impressively lengthy and diverse scope of this text. Following the introductory chapter, you've then got 16 chapters, which include two on insurable interest, followed by marine open cover and two chapters on insuring terms, always very, very, of course, important. And subsequent chapters deal, for example, with rejection risks, contract certainty in policies, which there was some <laughs> sometimes, and the multiplicity of issues relating to claims. The final chapter covers cargo recoveries, focusing quite rightly on the perhaps inevitable fatal errors and common mistakes in the process. And the two annexes right at the back, um, which are very helpful, I think, include the various descriptions of cargo families and the requirements of claims documentation, which of course is of, of, of crucial importance if there is a dispute which arises. Let me conclude by saying again, it's also of interest to note the seven page alphabetical list of cases and the truly massive list of abbreviations. Definitely this is a work of reference, um, which we, we certainly think it is, and which most if not all practitioners in this field will find essential. And I've got the date of publication of the paperback from um, Witherby's as cited at the 13th of March 2023. Let's have another look at it. There it is again. Heavy book as I say. And you've got the side, and nothing much on the back really at all. But a nice picture on the front, I have to say. Just opening it up in the middle. Um, this is theft, pilferage, and non delivery and piracy. An interesting area in its own right. And you see the paragraph numbering 8.8 .8 there, and then there's some footnoting. And there's a lot of detail, and a lot of referencing, which I thought was quite helpful. Because if you go right to the back, of the book again and you get to the bibliography you will see that there's a lot of 
There's, the journals are very important, but also you've got the the other books in the series, which are again quite important. Um, and there is, in fact, of course, the standard website, which is Lloyd's Market Association. Well, a big thank you to the author and to uh, Witherbids for producing this work. Um, I think it's a very important work if you're involved in this area of law. Uh, and as I say, good luck with everything that you do in this area, because it's complex. Thank you. Bye bye.